guess it'd be a good idea if I'd plug my microphone in to talk to you people. Hello, everybody. This is Frogman. Welcome back to Create Astral. And, uh, well, we did a few things in the last episode, and I have since prepared some fun stuff for us to uh, <laughs> play with, hopefully, because I decided instead of, um, well, doing all of the hard work off camera, I was going to do most of the hard work off camera and then let a little friend do our hard work. So uh, what we're going to do for right now is we're going to build the beginnings of the cobble generate, what I'm gonna call the cobble generation system or stuff that we're going to be building out of cobble. So we've got our cobble generator built back there and I already kind of pre-built this one and I kind of screwed up. I built it the block too high and I'm not gonna rip it up for right now, but it is functional. Uh, once I plug it in anyway, once we turn the belts back on, it will make cobblestone. So we can kind of take a look at this stuff and then we're gonna have a little friend build something. This is currently a hologram. I currently have a schematic laid in place so that will allow us to be able to build all of this and then I will discuss it before we build it. So anyhow, I uh, went ahead and built this. These are just really simple things. There are just four drills sitting over the top of a bunch of, can I get in here where you can actually see it? Um, eh, up, eh, is, I'm standing in a hole here. So there we go. So basically I've got a, a bunch of waterlogged stairs just because that makes it a little bit easier to not make a massive mess. Plus it allows you to build a cobblestone generator like this because a cobblestone, um, a stone stair like this will try to leak water this way but it won't leak water out the back, but it still counts as a water source. So that way you can build a cobblestone generator kind of simple like this without having a problem. So of course we have our lava on this side and we may eventually make this work a little bit better since we have infinite lava. There are ways of making these things faster and it all depends on how quickly you can get the lava laid down and how fast you spin your mechanical drill. But for right now, we're gonna be running everything, I think around 64, I forget exactly what this thing's on right now, but we can talk about that later. Anyhow, that is all being broadcasted down into some chutes that are then pushing that stuff down onto a belt. It's going into an item belt that is of reasonable size and if I need to make it larger, I can. I also have a stockpile switch here with a redstone link. Um, we spoke about these last time stockpile switches if you're looking for this thing it's actually a recreation or a, 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 a shapeless craft of a content observer both of these are very very usable which is a neat little deal it can do a couple of things but the biggest thing the biggest use for the uh, like I should say the content observer is the stockpile switch a stockpile switch basically is like an observer slash comparator and it will allow you to adjust when you want certain thresholds to happen in your storage network. So what it's doing is it's got a little face and that little face is looking into that item vault and I have this threshold set up here to this little line right here is when it's going to say I want you to once you get to 90% full you're going to send out a redstone signal and take this little ticker thingy, it just kind of moves along, and then it drops down into this hole, and it stays redstone signal on until it gets to 50%, and then it pops back up and shuts off. So what that's doing is it's controlling this clutch right here, which has the uh, the, the little the, the redstone link on top of it. So right now, that thing, if it was running, if I were to go hook this in, and we'll hook this in once we get all this built, uh, it's currently off which means it's going to allow that clutch to work which means again if we had power this would be making cobblestone right now and then what it'll do is once this gets to 90 percent full uh, it will send a redstone signal that will shut this clutch off and shut this machine off and let it kind of sit there. Um, these drills can get pretty ugly as far as kinetic stress impact depending on how fast you spin them. So it's one of those kinds of things if you don't necessarily need to be running them all the time, don't be running them all the time. But we do have a couple of fun little things again. Belt going through, a couple of gearboxes, everything happening. Using some encased dr chain drives up top to run them plus converting that down with a belt. And uh, just for the giggles, for right now I have access to cobblestone via this funnel and that depot so if I want a piece of cobblestone I can just grab it off of there or grab a stack of it doesn't really matter we'll just put those in right there they can go back into the system there's gonna be some things we're gonna do we have to do a lot of automation first and that's part of the reason why we're going to talk about this today 
So again, I went into creative and I got bored and I built this schematic. And this schematic, at least for the most part, so the basic idea of this whole thing, this, this schematic that I have built right here, designed and creative at least for the moment, is to just take what we can get from cobblestone and turn it into a lot of things that you can then use later on. So the first thing that's happening right over there is we have a little system that's going to grab cobblestone, run it through some crushing wheels, and turn it into gravel. And then that's going to put a gravel into storage here, and then we'll be able to then output the gravel out into these crushing wheels that will then allow us to, you know, just make sand. So that's what these first two steps are doing, and I decided to do them horizontally you can actually take up a whole heck of a lot less space by going vertical with these things instead of the horizontal way where they're standing up in the air like uh, so, this and this. So when you try to do this this way, it's like, yeah, well, that doesn't take a whole lot of a block space area. The problem is, is in order to get from the level position up to here with the belt in order to feed these things, it takes a lot of horizontal distance this way to get that done. If you do this according to being this way, where's my thing? If you notice, there's not a whole lot of space in there. And it said, that's all the horizontal space I need because if I want to, what I can do, I can stack another set of these on top of them or stack another set on the bottom of them or go up and down and vertical. And then all I have to do is figure out how to make them feed vertically. Well, since we have the buffers, these things right here, this is something I realized after I laid this down, and if I need to make it any bigger, I will, like if it's not creating enough cobblestone or sand or whatever, anything like that for us. You can take these buffers, and these buffers will act like pipes if you configure their interfaces to move correctly. So technically what I can do is I can put a buffer right here on this uh, this dude right here and then stack another set of these on here and then basically just put another one of those right there and the crushing wheels sit on top of this and then I'd have a two sets of crushing wheels in the same size. If you want to go down, you can keep doing that. The whole point is to just try to, you know, use as much space as you possibly can. Once you start stacking these things this direction, they get really, 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 really long. And I had a kind of a limited amount of space out of it. So anyhow, so we're going to be making cobble, or I should say gravel, sand. Sand, of course, is going to be the first major thing we're going to use. And I've got a few things I've got to move around because I had to adjust this as I was doing things. And of course, if you notice, there's something that is not technically supposed to be in this pack. And that's because of the fact that I installed some redstone. Uh, I think it's, what is this? Hang on a second. Uh, this. Wired Redstone Mod. Um, I'm a huge fan of anything that looks like red alloy wire or any kind of thing that allows me to stick redstone to walls. We don't have any of this currently just yet, and I'm not 100% certain whether or not this thing's actually going to figure out what it needs to do. But for the most part, what we've done, we're going to talk about it a little bit more, and then we're going to let it go. We're going to let it build, and then we're going to see if we can turn it on. There's going to be a lot of programs. But one thing that this pack severely was missing, considering the fact that they're wanting us to do all kinds of automation, is any kind of special wired, any kind of redstone stuff. So at wired redstone. This is going to give me a bunch of my old favorite uh, Project Red Gates. These are amazing for this kind of stuff. It'll also give me a whole bunch of things like this. And for what it's worth, in order to be able to craft it, I might, I might like make this and then throw away something, or maybe I'll get bored and change up the uh, the recipes. The recipes are not incredibly awful as far as parts are concerned, considering the fact that it's going to cost a, a fair amount of stuff to get a few things, plus, you know, the wool and everything. It's going to require us to be able to power this, I think. I don't know how it's going to work. I haven't built it yet. I'm not certain as I'm ready to use it completely because, you know, it is what it is. But we'll play around with that as it goes. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. So again, right here, this little assembly will make stone. This little assembly is supposed to, I think we're getting into the first sand. So this should be glass. There'll be some lava right there. Uh, this will be the soul sand. So there should be soul sand right there. So that means we'll take sand and uh, turn it into soul sand. And then on this one here, I do believe this one's going to have water. So that'll take sand and turn it into clay. And then you come over to this one. I believe this is the one that should have two on the back of it. Yes, correct. So this will take the soul sand that we're going to be making down the road and turning it into quartz and 
gold nuggets. So this will be the first time we do a little compacted process here where I'm going to take the gold nuggets we get out of that and compact it using a basin and the mechanical press and then that will get placed into this should I need it. That's going to be a temporary box until we can get to the actual thing because eventually there's going to be an output line that will probably end up over on this wall somewhere where all of this information, all this stuff, anything that we need to go do will come over into a storage system that's going to be on this wall and uh, this wall will likely get ripped apart and I know I've got it all kind of pretty decorated right now but I'm kind of contemplating saying that we have this set up then there'll be a walkway and then there will be this kind of a style of a structure again right here that will have a whole bunch of more storage in it that we'll be able to access. Um, I think pretty much what we're going to do, we're going to be using this area as a crafting area for the most part and major storage, but then there will be an area probably right along this wall here where we're going to have our normal little everyday machines that we can use. But anyhow, in order to get these schematics to work, one, you need to be able to make a schematic, which means you need to create the thing that you need to do in order to build the thing. And then you have to create the schematics. An empty schematic is a piece of paper and light blue dye. In order to be able to use it, however, and this is where my problem is with this particular function of the mod, is the fact that you have to combine that with a feather. Okay, that's not a big deal. In order to make this, once you get it set up, so you select an area and then you say, okay, I want to save it, you'll be able to save it. It saves as an NBT file in your, it just saves it as a file on your game instance that will allow you to use it over and over and over again. So let me go over here real quick and we'll go get the thing that you use to access it with which is the schematic table. If we go in here, I've had several different attempts at trying to get the cobble works to work because <laughs> um, one of the biggest problems that I always have is I tend to build with uh, temporary stone bricks. And unfortunately, when you do stone bricks, the first thing that's a stone brick in this pack is infested stone bricks. Um, so I have a few in that. I'll have to go find them. We, we may have some fun. It's nothing like living dangerously and I can make infested stone bricks. I had the entire platform built out of them and I had to go back in and remove them but I still managed to forget at least five so we have five in it but anyhow you can uh, design things keep them working be able to move them from various places and then you take something like this and I'll get to the point of why I don't like the feather in a second and then you can take this place this in here if you click this button it will take this and record it into a thing that looks like this. Now um, when you use this schematic in IE, you have your schematic cannon place it down, it removes the feather, meaning I can't use this particular thing again. Now, for a one-time shot, that's fine, but as you saw, I had hallway stuff in there. All of those hallways, all the ones up here, I built those by hand. All the rest of them, I want this thing to do it, this, this cannon. And, um, well, it's going to require that I kill a chicken every single time I want to build another hallway segment. I think that's a little, little, little much. I may have to go get a chicken farm or I may have to actually build the extension out so that it's several blocks long because it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But anyhow, in order to use the schematic cannon, first of all, you have to build the thing, and then you have to give it a little gunpowder. Hopefully 799 is enough. If not, I have a little bit more. And you have to take a schematic. So this schematic, it gives you a little bit of an idea. Here's what's going on. You have a bunch of controls down on the bottom that if you press Alt down here, you can scroll through and do the things that you need to. So like your first option is this. If I hit Control, scroll, it will allow it to move. Once you place it down. Of course, if I move over, then I can lift it up or lift it down. As you can see, there's going to be some things in the floor. There's a control down here on the bottom. And uh, what it's going to do is I'll have it set up so that it takes care of things. But as you can see here, we're going to be driving those crushing wheels from the underside. I'm going to use a clutch here as well to shut those crushing wheels off once we're not doing anything. And then, of course, all the other little blocks that are holding things up that needs to be in place to do stuff. So it's kind of a fancy little way of doing things. I was going to build it one block up, but then I kind of started to realize that one block up was going to get quite a distance into the roof. So if anything, what we might do is we might rechange things out, do whatever. I don't know. We're, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to play around, but we'll put it in the floor for now. Sadly, almost all of this particular structure is going to be in the ground because it's 
level and easy to do with the, the belts. As you can see, I'm using the vaults, and I think, sadly, I'm probably going to have to go and reorganize some of these vaults because it didn't copy them correctly when I copied them. So, like, this vault's not going to work correctly. Neither is this one. Neither is that one. It's just some of the fun things about, you know, how modded works. Like, that vault's broken. But as long as it can get it all down in place and I don't have to build it three times, four times, I think this is the fourth time I've built this, then we should be fine. So let's go ahead and do the other little thing that you need to do when you're doing these things. You understand that when you build this, you're going to have to get an idea of what's going on. And what it's going to be able to do, what you'll be able to do with these, is you'll be able to take the schematic and place a book in this position right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell you all of the things that you need to do. And as you can see, I have all of the things check marked to include five infested stone bricks. Uh, I'm going to have fun with that because I, I don't know where they are and I don't really care because that was a mistake on my part and I'll learn to do that, of, you know, not to do that eventually. But it's nice because it gives you a list of all the things that you need. And as you place lists into barrels or chests around the cannon, you can come back over here, place the book in here, and it will tell you what you're still missing. So, final little step before we do things. I want to make sure that you replace solid with solid and replace... Uh, you can do skip missing blocks and theoretically, I guess... I could actually... Because I really don't want those in that mess. Those would be the only ones we're missing, I think, right now. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll replace solid with any. That way, it will replace solid blocks since working area of schema schematic take contains, excuse me, any block at that location. That's going to be important for us because it's going to make sure that the stuff that is uh, placed in the, um, well, the, like where the clutches are in the ground, uh, especially the ones with the little redstone thingies on the side of them, they should not have a problem. So, I guess I'm going to give that a whirl because if it won't care about those blocks, I, it's the biggest mistake I ever made. That entire platform, as you get this entire platform, every single one of those stone bricks, <laughs> every single one of those stone bricks was infested stone bricks. <laughs> so let's go ahead. We're on pause. We have a stop and uh, hit go. And I kind of want to hear it for fun. Uh, where is it? should have been every little bit of that pre-built without us having to worry about it. So that's one of the blocks I missed. That's fine. Um, these can go to the, uh, the, the the abysmal trash can that is over here because I am not about to do that. Last time I make that mistake. Okay. So with all that being done, we should have some leftover parts that it didn't need to use up. So that's perfectly fine. That's great. Are you done? So. This is the point when I'm saying that it sucks. When you're trying to do this repetitively over and over and over again and just move down a hallway or move down a specific thing. So like you say, I've designed a design for this floor and I wanna, you know, just 
stamp it down multiple times over and over again. I have to design the entire floor. And then use one, well, to be to be useful for my, uh, you know, my feather. So now it's an empty schematic and I can use it again. So I have to, in order to get it to load that, like say, if I wanted to load this schematic back up, I have to go back over to that table, put that one in there with a feather, find the schematic I want to do, and then do it again. So um, it's cool, but I wish that there was a functionality where it did not do that with specific repetitive things and maybe I'm just dumb and don't know it so anyhow let's go ahead and get this wired in so yeah I'm gonna leave this one up in the air for now this is gonna go over here and I think you guys might just might change that section right there um, I'll, I'm gonna sink this in the ground one. I, I screwed up when I did that and it's perfectly fine. So you did not get your piece of stuff. You go right there. All right, now it's time to go ahead and get all of the little things figured out. I also figured out that if you put stairs around the outside of one of these things, it kind of uh, makes it look really nice. So that's really cool. All right, where is another one? That's supposed to be a bucket of lava. That's not supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be there. And I think I saw another one down here somewhere. I guess it doesn't really matter. So at the end of the line down here, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down. I'm just going to go down underneath the walkway, and then we're going to start the next level of stuff this direction. So what I want to do is basically all of the very, very, very boring, mundane things are going to happen back here. So let's go ahead and get it started. We have to put in a few lava buckets, which I think should be yeah i didn't program any of this nice okay that should be a lava bucket i believe so how i'm doing these things let's go ahead and take this brick off and i'll show you what this is going to be there's one over there that i missed oh i didn't want to do that no this there thank you okay so how we're doing this is essentially we're going to do a bunch of things that you can do with the uh encased fans right off the bat so what i'm doing here is i'm going to have a feeder belt that is going to take stuff from all of the resources over here we're going to take a funnel we're going to inhale it using a specific um oh crap i did it again now uh just like that that's fine and then if you take this What's really cool is, is it will save even the settings to the filter that you had when you put it on. So that's the beauty of the that thing, for that matter. So all of the filters that I placed in, all of the numbers, like I'm going to have to move this thing. It's in the wrong place. It's supposed to be up here. But um, anyhow, we got to fix this, too. And as soon as I do that, I'll lose that filter. So uh, give me this real quick so that I can make sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And, yeah, that one's broken, too. Lovely. Can I have that back, please? That, that, and then this, and this. No, nope, the other way. The other way. So they're very, the, the vaults are very particular as to how you place them so that they'll form correctly. So if you see that one, I'm going to have to tear, I guess I got to tear them all down, or at least, like, say this one's going to be broken too. Um, and then I can just do, I know it sucks, but it's one of those kinds of things. You just have to deal with it. That should just go. Where's the third one? Oh, it's over here. Okay. And then, boink. So that should extend all the way down. For whatever reason, that did not fall off. That's good. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're going to take an input from the thing that we're going to filter correctly. So this filter that fell out that's going to be cobblestone. It's going to pick up cobblestone. It's going to place them down one or two at a time onto a depot. Now, I'm doing this backwards because of the way the fans turn. The fans, because of the way that belt is going to be working, it's going to be pulling across. So it doesn't really matter as long as you understand where you put your usable material. So on this, we're going to put a bucket of lava right there. And what that fan's going to do is it's going to pull that lava that direction and turn this into a smelting thing. And on this little filter right here, I have this set to stone. So the only thing that funnel is going to be able to pick up is stone it's going to then transport it put it into this item vault and there should be a i broke it didn't i um redstone link there's supposed to be a redstone link right here uh where are all my things this is still part of the fun party there's still plenty of things that you need to do it didn't get all of them done because i was tired last night working on this how in the world did i not grab my thing Give me that. Okay. So to keep this from outputting, we're going to go ahead and do this for right now and uh, this for right now. Why are you? Where did all my... 
How come it didn't put these down? That's interesting. Uh, no, I don't want that. One second. Let me fix this. Okay. Anyhow, as we continue, um, what that's going to basically do is it's going to allow us to place that into here. We're going to use a belt return system on the side here. This will just give me more access. So, like, if I need to dump more than one set of stone out onto the line, I can just go ahead and do this here that is controllable up here. So, like, I can use these redstone, uh, redstone, I, that, 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 that right there, that link to turn this thing on. And the redstone will transfer through a uh, one of these, one of the item vaults, so you have to be kind of careful. So I'm going to have to go make a bunch of the redstone um, wiring, but I think we could probably, for that matter, the reason why I wanted the wiring is that I want to be able to control here when I have this as well. So like say once this item, this stockpile switch here has set, uh, has realized that this, uh, this item vault is full, I want it to shut off both the dumping of whatever it is over here and I also want it to d shut off this particular thing granted yes we could just hook up another one of those on the same channel but I really don't want to do that right now it's just a, it's a waste of it's a waste of at this point in time a brass casing but again on down the line so we're going to be doing stone glass in a similar fashion that's going to get some red or some lava this I believe is the yeah this one just needs to be lit where is my thing? You can have that. That will haunt whatever you put down there. So, like, if we want to haunt some soul, uh, some sand into soul sand, we'll be able to do that. And then I'll have to fix this guy right here as well. I'll fix all these off camera in just a second. Of course, I think this one is going to be a water bucket. So the last one should be washing soul sand. So, again, encased fan. If you grab this guy and you look up soul sand over, we can do it better this way. Soul sand use on you. If you wash it, you get a gold nugget and you get nether quartz. The same thing for soul soil, I believe, if you do uh, the same kind of deal. I don't know. if I think the chances are about the same. Soul soil, you can't really craft it, but if you're mining an awful, I mean, I guess you can haunt dirt. If you wanted to haunt dirt, uh, you could do that and make more of those kinds of things. So I find it a little bit easier to do the soul sand and uh anyhow so then this should have a filter or this was supposed to have a filter on it i guess it lost its filter here too this is going to be a gold nugget right there okay right there thank you you can go on that and then we need to make sure that that one has its thing down there good deal this should say another quartz gold nugget cool and then out here you should have soul sand you do all right, I'm just going to make sure everything is working correctly. Um, a side note on this one, and I'm going to do it right now for giggles. I have sand and clay in this because this is the clay maker. We get clay from grinding sand at a very low rate, very, very, very low rate. So I want to take all of that clay, and instead of throwing it in the trash, we're going to put it down there. That may eventually cause an overload over here, but that's fine because again it's just going to sit right here and get used up clay is going to be a very big deal for us because this pack has changed because that's how we make alloys this stuff here in this doing that we're going to be using a lot of it we're going to automate all three of those eventually so let's see here i think you just need a bucket of lava and i think we're good to go at that point one more time you go right here and then I'll place that over that. Now, the biggest problem again is we gotta go make the red alloy wire, which means we need to go make the thing that makes the thing. So let's go over to the other place and then I'm gonna have to probably harvest a sheep or three. Okay, so for this mod, since it's an additional thing and you guys can do this your normal old way, I just choose not to do it. I need to make a redstone assembler. So that's gonna be two pieces of smooth stone, a furnace, Crafting table, block of redstone, and two polished deep slate. Uh, one, two, three of those. I think I have a furnace around. If not, we can make one. And a crafting table. What else did I need to make? Uh, two smooth stone. That sucks. Uh, cobblestone. No, actually, no. Um, one, two. Those need to go in here. Here, go in there and give me some. That. And then I need a crafting table.
I'm hoping that I don't need to make power for this. I'm hoping because it says furnace. All right. Um, okay, good. I can burn materials to make this work. Good deal. So the first thing I need to make is a few red, red alloy ingots. Let's go grab some coal for this, charcoal, whatever. Beautiful, awesome. Assuming that's going to charge that buffer up. Nice, awesome, good deal. So again, this is just personal preference on my part. I do apologize for those of you that probably are going to get mad at me. I really just can't stand dealing with vanilla redstone when I can have a mod that does it a lot better. So I will gladly burn this kind of stuff to make it work. Oh, is it a crafting table too? That's neat. Huh, all right, how we make. There we go. Oh. Oh. Okay, I get it now. I'm not gonna use this for anything other than this little section. This is a powered, powered programmable crafter. Neat. Okay, cool. We'll let it craft a couple of things. I, I just want enough so that we can get those, those, uh, those lines built in. And then again, if somebody decides they want to add a specific mod, like I said, I really wanted redstone pen, but redstone pen was not available to me. So this way I'm, I'm burning fuel and I had to do all that kind of stuff. I, I guess that's kind of fair. We have to, you know, do this kind of stuff here. Uh, I need to go get some sheep sheared so that I can get some wool so that we can travel or move on forward. All right, I got a few sheep pieces uh, successfully gathered up. I just need to get back into base. I think we can do that over here. I don't remember if I've uh, left that blocked up or not. I've got a lot of decorating to do, a whole lot of things to play around with, lots of fun stuff to make. But let's go ahead and toss this in here, get us a couple of covered wires just so we can do this a little bit easier. Thank you very much. Use on this, that means two of those. So you do the wire. How do we make wire? Wire is that. All right, you do this. Guess I should have made another one. All right, that gave us plenty of stuff. So then again, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a bit of covered wire here just to make things a little bit easier on us. So I'll just do all of those, I suppose. That and that plus this, go. Might have to make a few more, yeah. Uh, do that again. Okay, cool. We can start with that, and if I need to make more, that's fine. Again, this is just me being me. I'd rather just do it the easy way because I've got other things i got to do. Plus, redstone wire is a heck of a lot cleaner, and it sticks to walls than other things do. Plus, you can dye the color. You can make the insulation work. It has buses. We have, well, we have the ability to make logic gates. Uh, these right here, so like I can make and make this with that, which is amazing. Um, actually, go ahead and I did set up. Yep, just go ahead and do that because we're probably gonna want it. We're gonna have to actually build one of those to control some of this. But for now, let's just go ahead and get the controls in that we need. So that needs to be that. I need to move a few things around and I need to get that hooked up. Let me fix all this up and then we can come back and play around with it because I've got a bunch of this to fix. All right, moment of truth for now. That should go right there. I already had this kind of planned out somewhat, but the inter inter everything is nice and full. Are you gonna turn the right direction? Excellent, we're turning the right direction. Now I gotta come down here and do a couple of making sure everything else is functioning. So I've gotta fix this because I remember these didn't wanna place correctly. So those should now do the right thing. And let's see, you, you do that direction. Everything should be blowing. I see air. I see air. I see air. We'll talk about this in a second. I see air. 
I see air. I see tail belts moving. Good deal. Compressing going along just fine. And uh, I do need to go ahead and get one more little well. We'll just let it sit there. But if it does whatever it does, it does whatever. If we get any excess crap floating off, it's fine. It can just rot for right now. Oh, my goodness, at my inventory being full. So, anyhow, to continue on with how we're going to do this. Again, I have these kinds of... I wanted this specific mod, or at least this specific type of redstone, because insulated cables like this will not actuate things right here. So, like, once this turns on over here, once this is happy and it's full, it won't accidentally power this block or this block. It'll just pass right on by it and then turn this block on. So if I wanted to, theoretically, I could even make sure it gets the right block by doing this and do this, put this here, and then place a little bit of red alloy wire so that it only powers that thing. If we have a problem, we'll do it that way. If we don't, I'm not going to sweat it because I don't want those blocks. They look like Atta garbage but hey we can work on it later so that should help and again you can do this with normal redstone it would just require a few more blocks so like if you wanted to do this with normal redstone um, for one you'd have to use normal redstone two you'd have to be able to do something kind of like this which is I'd have to come up a block across all of these and then take redstone and do this and then that should work that direction. But with the way the new redstone blocks work and the fact that when you do this, it outputs signal every direction, even directions you don't want. And that could still, because that block is right here, power that one. So, like, um, that's kind of a problem. Anyhow, I'm not worried about it. We'll use the other things. Good Lord, give me my pickaxe back. Okay. Now, the reason why, before we go ahead and do any more of this, the reason why I'm using item vaults is because item vaults allow you to build them in a fashion that will let you kind of construct them how you need to. And I know this has kind of been mentioned, and I know quite a few YouTubers probably tend to say the same thing, or people that play the whole deal. Once you learn why item vaults are so good, it's kind of one of those things you do. Do I have any left? It added, it wanted all of them. The beauty of an item vault is once you build it like this, it's a, it's a multi-block structure, which means it's a multi-block structure you can make in a shape like that, meaning I can use it to enter on this side down here, say like for instance, and exit up there if I want to. So it's a way for you to get height in the create mod without having to fool around, which is why I did some of the reason why I did with the stuff in here. So give my stuff back. Um, so like these right here specifically, this is entering on the bottom of this particular item vault and exiting here and here. And I wanted this particular item vault to be, both of these two to be fairly big, which is why they're set where they are. So it's kind of one of those things. You can use it to get that one extra bit of height. And again, if you wanted to make this taller, you just stack another set of these on top and put another one of them right there. And it'll just throw it into that deal. That's the funny thing about these is that uh, once it grinds it, it throws it into that uh, funnel. <laughs> so hopefully everything is working. Hopefully everything is ready to go. So the only thing we have left to do is talk about that thing right there. That is an AND gate. AND gate right here. AND gate is going to require a bunch of inverting cathodes, a bunch of cathodes, and a bunch of red wire plates, um, and all of that stuff. And what that's going to do is it's a three-way AND gate. It's going to wait until all three of these inventory checker thingies right here are producing a redstone signal before it will turn on and shut off this particular interface right there. I know right now it's off because all of everything is off. We're going to be turning this thing on one at a time. I've got a bunch of containers over there full of junk that I don't need to be doing. So, um, And you're just going to do that, aren't you? Lovely. Whatever. We may have to we may have to put a block or something around that. I guess I'll just be careful about the wood that we use. So that should make sure out here that when these things do what they're supposed to do or when they turn on, we shouldn't have an issue with overflow. And that means all three of these particular machines or particular processes are going to have to be active and full before I can stop making this happen or pushing things out here and stop making sand. So again, um, well, the other thing here I should say, um, do you have control back here? your redstone links off of these so that when this is done constructing things or done grinding things it will shut these off or at least it's supposed to so i guess um belts are turning this should be reasonably kind of slow let's just do this
Okay, so on the wall over here, we're going to have two things that we need to worry about. Because of the fact that I'm using different frequencies for both, I want to be able to control them both separately. So we have a cobblestone into gravel frequency and a cobblestone into stone frequency and a spare one should we think we need it for something else. I'm going to go ahead and turn that one on and let it go to work. Okay, cool. So that should grab those, toss those into here. That will place this into this barrel. I have an interface right here. Because of the fact that this hopper only works at a specific speed that is slower than the rest of the system is going to work. So what I'm doing is I'm going to measure off of this particular barrel. And once it fills up both these things, I'm going to be changing this out. I've realized that I did this way, 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 way wrong. And now that I have the buffers, we're going to be working this. But essentially what it's going to do here is it's going to shut off this thing once this is done. When it does that, it's going to send a signal to this particular redstone link, which is going to shut this off and shut off the cobblestone over there so we're not throwing things around. Yes, there's going to be a minute amount of overflow. No, I really don't care. At this point, this is all free. So anyhow, that's making call or should be making gravel for us. Part of the thing here that I did do is I put down a depot for them to throw it onto so that if I happen to be standing here, it wouldn't get tossed into my inventory. Same thing is happening over here for the sand. So we should be making sand now. And any type of, wow, flint. Flint goes in here. Now the next thing that I need to do since we're standing here is I want to put a filter down for the clay. And you are going to go right there and you're going to go to work so that that clay can get chucked down to where the clay gets made, which should be right about there. That'll get picked up, dropped into there, and placed into that thing so that essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to let that kind of overflow happen right there. If it fills up that depot and shoves itself into here, it's perfectly fine. If it ends up just sitting here and lagging out the world, then we'll worry about it at the time comes. But that should at least produce a little bit of stuff. Once we get the sand kind of rolling here, the this is going to be doing the work. We should be producing sand at a decently reasonable rate. Again, once this kind of fills up a little bit, we can't really see right now because it's probably, ah, it's moving. Good. It's moving. I'm going to adjust these so that they do a little bit better job on it because it's still taking a, it'll take a long time to do things, but I can do this now. Oh, no, 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 no. One. Holy cow. Um, eh, whoops. I probably should just... Let's do you in a different fashion, please. You do that. Now, there you go. That way, all of the sand will go to the first place that the sand can go to, which is going to be making glass. So this is going to be glass over here doing the work, smelting the glass. And you can kind of see how this is going to work. Once that fills up, then it go to making soul sand and then clay and then quartz and then all of those things so uh, i have a whole lot of drawers and whatnot that i'm going to go ahead and slowly move into some of this stuff and because there's no reason for me to be storing sand and gravel anymore over there so i will go ahead and drop those both onto this system and we'll we'll just kind of see how things work from there and um i guess let me uh let me get a can we could get a kind of a thing here i don't know where i want to kind of grab this one from but We'll do it maybe right there, or we'll do it from over here. And we're making pots, or at least we're making parts to make parts to make parts right now. So uh, next step is going to be doing the exact same thing on this wall, except we're probably going to get a little bit more exciting about it. So I guess until then, I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.